Welcome to the second module of our second annual George Mason University um, Defense, Acquisition, Defense Acquisition University Government Contracting Conference. Um, so this is our second module and today's focus is on acquisition and procurement. And I'm Jerry McGinn, the Executive Director of the Center for Government Contracting, which is in the School of Business here at George Mason. And this is the second year we've had a partnership with Defense, with DAU. And so to kick off and welcome, uh, um, welcome you to our session, we have Dr. John Hillen, uh, representing the university, and Mr. Frank Kelly from DAU. Uh, Dr. Hillen is chairman of the Center Advisory Board um, and is CEO of Everwatch Solutions, as well as an adjunct professor of strategy here at the school, um, here at the School of Business. And Frank Kelly is the VP uh, for DAU, and he's in charge of curriculum development, strategic planning, and getting um, all, all the um, courses and uh, uh, training modules ready for de delivery. So I'll turn it over to John to, to um, get us going. Great, thanks very much, Jerry, and I appreciate it. And I'm really thrilled, you know, when we came up with the idea now probably six years ago or so of having uh, a university center in a school of business that focused on this half a trillion dollar year government contracting industry. Um, uh, it was things like this conference, virtual or otherwise, that we envisioned could happen. Uh, a new meeting place for academia, uh, business, government, otherwise, all with the same goal, to study the industry to make for a more efficient and effective marketplace for the public goods, something that benefits everybody. So it's a real thrill to see us carrying on uh, through COVID and otherwise. As you know, this is the second module of the George Mason University Defense Acquisition University Conference about government contracting in a changed world. And the changes are certainly not slowing down, of course. Um, today's going to be really interesting, uh, I think, for everybody. Uh, we've got about 350 people signed up, and I think a, a lot of people will be coming in and out throughout the day. But the focus of today's module is to really dive into the acquisition and procurement issues that uh, everybody in the industry and on the government side has been dealing with since mid-March. Um, there are things about what lessons we can learn from uh, how the U.S. government and its partners in the contracting community responded to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic? How can we adapt the emergency contracting procedures and approaches that we used during the response to improve our processes going forward? Um, uh, what does the new normal look like? Uh, my guess is there's some kind of uh, uh, semi uh, emergency contracting response in place for a while on the other side of um, the, uh, the pandemic. All pandemics end. We hope this one ends sooner rather than later, especially with potentially effective vaccines on the horizon. But it, it's not going to return overnight to just like it was. And so what, is, what does that look like and what should be the uh, kind of contracting strategies that make sense there for, for both the government and the, the partners in the contracting community? Um, on the pure company side, I think we want to hear from people about how they've adapted their growth strategies, both organic and inorganic, since March, and, uh, and what can we expect in the coming months. I'll tell you, you know, um, at, uh, at Everwatch, we landed our biggest uh, organic win, ended our biggest inorganic M&A deal uh, in the middle of this, uh, in the last week of July, both happened in the last week of July, but it wasn't without some serious, um, interesting and slightly different uh, you know, gymnastics, especially on M&A, you know, raising capital and debt markets that are kind of frozen uh, by, uh, by uh, the pandemic. Um, so it was all a little bit different, but we still were able to get it done. But on the other hand, you know, the, everybody's pipeline has been slowed and acquisition and procurement uh, rhythms have been disrupted as they do during any kind of government shutdowns, sequestration, pandemic or otherwise. So we want to explore that. How are, how are leaders leading their institutions through all that? So we've got those and, you know, a hundred other questions that we're going to have everybody chewing on from industry, from government, from academia, and from elsewhere for the discussion today. So our goal is to connect everybody, all those communities and more, and uh, to share knowledge and gain knowledge and advance our joint mission, the joint mission to serve the public good. Um, we have a fantastic lineup of government, industry, and academic speakers to get us started. We've got feedback sessions um, throughout and at the end. And I'm really looking forward to having a great conference. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to our uh, partner at DAU, Frank Kelly. Hey, sir. Thanks a lot. And uh, uh, on behalf of all the folks at DAU, I'd really like to thank uh, GMU 
and the Center for Government and Contracting for being a great partner on this. Our president, Jim Woolsey, uh, was able to kick off the first module, and so he asked me to just say a couple of quick things uh, for DAU um, uh, on this one. First of all, completely agree with the, the lineup, and I love the subject. Uh, Stacy Cummings, who has now returned back to her primary responsibilities, is one of the panel members. She's intimately familiar with the response to COVID, and so I think that you guys did a fantastic job of picking somebody who really, really understood what was going on out there. For DAU, we have uh, Hallie Balkin, who's participating on one of the panels today, and I love the fact that we're now having titles like Beyond OTAs. For me, OTAs, it was, all of, it was like the Saturday Night Live episode, more cowbell. Hey, bring me more OTAs. And I love the fact that we're thinking beyond how that's going to how that's going to be important for us as we move forward in this brave new world. Uh, this, the uh, chief learning officer of the Navy and, uh, and I had a chance to talk in March about the impacts of COVID that was happening on the acquisition world. And I can tell you right now, looking back, uh, we didn't know anything, although he, car he carried that little discussion way better than I did, but we didn't know anything then. I'm sure that, uh, that when uh, the Lessons Learned panel, the third panel today, gets a chance to talk, they'll have provide some uh, uh, great insight for us. <clears throat> and if you never thought that this whole COVID thing was sort of dominating the speed, think about 60 Minutes uh, this past Sunday, where they featured uh, General Perna and uh, warp speed. And he talked all about contracting and doing things that were new and a really risky, uh, high risk environment uh, that, he's, that he's been dealing with. But I'll tell you one thing that I'm really excited about and it's looking at Eric Lofgren here. Um, Eric Lofgren's got this great little blog out there and I love it because, uh, because it's provocative. And we need to continue to be provocative and we need to continue to learn these things and face the things that we did well and face the things that we did not do well. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. And for folks out there, all you got to do is Google him. He's going to be in the top three out there. I think you'll love the acquisition talk blog that he's got out there. Uh, so I'm really excited about being uh, a part of it today. I know that we're thinking about Veterans Day, but let's not go too fast. Today is November 10th. It's the 245th Marine Corps birthday, and to so all my fellow Marines out there, uh, Semper Fi. Thank you for letting me participate. Thanks, John and Frank, and um, appreciate your, your opening remarks. Great to have this partnership, and, and look forward to continuing in person next year. Um, and you know, speaking of Eric, Eric is honchoing um, this um, this module. Uh, he uh, we just put out a report on Friday. Uh, which you all would have received in your email. It's up on our website. It's our latest report on COVID, the federal response, industry impact, and even gets into operation warp speed and some uh, supply chain impacts. So uh, recommend that for your, uh, for your bedtime reading or daytime reading. It's really, really rich and full of data. Eric was the lead for us on that. Um, and um, he's going to go over the agenda. But before, one thing I want to highlight before I pass to him is after the conference, at the end, we're going to have two post-conference scrums. We did this last um, module and it was really successful. Uh, these are two opportunities for you to, to um, speak with the speakers, um, the, those that didn't, you didn't get your questions answered uh, in the, in the, at the forefront. You get the opportunity to speak with them. Uh, we're gonna have them, um, all, all, almost all the speakers are representatives from their offices in that Zoom conference. And the second option is a special um, um, focused Zoom conversation on small business, the impacts of small business. And that is gonna be sponsored by CCAF, the, the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the Small and Emerging uh, Contractors uh, Advisory Forum. Uh, and that's gonna have several CEOs on there. So we look forward to that discussion. So, uh, but over to uh, Eric and- Thanks, Jerry. So yeah, the, the, mod the module this time and the theme is acquisition and procurement. So our plan area will just be coming right up. Go click that link. Uh, the officials from DOD, HHS, and GSA will be there talking about the COVID response. And then we'll have another session on other transaction. And as Frank Kelly said, what's beyond that and then how to get build in flexibility into contracts moving forward. And we'll wrap up with an industry focused session on corporate growth. And then don't, don't miss out on those uh, scrum sessions after that. So I'd like to thank our title sponsor, Uninet. So cue the video.
It is my pleasure to be with you this morning to show Uninet's support of the Center for Government Contracting and the government contracting industry that we all serve. Uninet is a leading provider of ERP solutions purpose-built for government contractors, architects, engineers, and other professional services companies. More than 2,000 project-driven organizations depend on Uninet to turn their information into actionable insights, drive better decision-making, and nurture business growth. Uninet views the theme for this conference, Government Contracting in a Changed World, as directly appropriate for the federal agencies and the firms who support their public mission. We are proud to be a part of this special event. Be sure to take advantage of all it has to offer and have a great conference.